as we do. I mean, if you are using store-made matzo meal for this, you are wimps. You have to make the real stuff. Okay, pulsing it until it's a flower. that was not enough. Um, you actually need um, more about four matzos. When we measured it out, it wasn't even a cup. Oh, and if you're just using store-bought, which I hope you're not, you need one and a half cups of this stuff. So you need to crack six eggs in a medium bowl and then whisk thoroughly until no streaks remain. So I have this really handy hand mixer that I got from for Christmas. I, I really like it. It's really convenient. Look how quickly I've beaten these eggs. 
I mean, today my fortune cookie said you have much to be thankful for, but I mean, it's right. I celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, Easter, and Passover. I mean, that's good. So right now we're using duck fat. They call for schmaltz, which is melted chicken fat, but we're using melted duck fat. Keep in mind that if you're using this, it's a lot fattier than chicken fat. So I'd say a tablespoon of this stuff and the rest in oil. So I added one tablespoon of the duck fat and just putting in the rest in oil. Man, it smelled really weird, like really intense. I bet that's what gives it some of that really fatty flavor. So now six tablespoons of chicken broth. I mean, if you have water, that's fine, but really chicken broth works best. So t six tablespoons of this. So now time to do some TikTok chopping on you, Dill. So if you see big stems, Hannah just pick them out because you want to really finely chop dill for these matzo balls. So now what you have to do is after you've added in the duck fat and all that, you have to add in the three tablespoons of chopped dill. Now you have to mix vigorously to combine and after you're finished with that, you add in your matzo meal. Now I'm adding in our one and a half cups of freshly made matzo meal. Look at that stuff, just amazing. Never made anything like it. All my years, I have never seen anything like this. But seriously though, this is amazing. Putting in some pepper and one and a half teaspoons of salt. So this is what your mixture is supposed to look like. You just have to put this in your fridge to chill for half an hour to two. I'm now just mixing all the mix. Oh my God, that's cold. It's so cold. So now I'm gonna start making matzo balls. You want one about this size. Whew, this is some cold mixture. That's the So what I'm doing now is making our balls. In the meantime, you wanna put a pot of boiling water on to boil, which we're gonna put our little matzo balls into and let cook for about 40 minutes. Once the matzo balls are in, we're gonna start making our chicken soup. Or as Babushka Nina used to call it, Kulina Bulyonchik. You may wonder what that means. That means Grandma Nina's chicken soup in Russian for the matzo water to boil, we're gonna start making our chicken soup. This is awkward, I'm rinsing the chicken. This is just awkward. I feel like I'm holding a baby, very hairy, bony baby. Very weird, very weird. Then you just plop this guy in a pot. So now you have to cover the chicken with water, but it has to be dressed up. And after you're finished handling it, Make sure to wash your hands with soap because it might have salmonella poisoning on it. Hello, what's your name? Nice to meet you. This is odd. I'm, I'm playing with a dead chicken. It's a little awkward though. You can you can see inside of it. You can you can see what the phrase chicken legs comes from and chicken wings. These are chicken legs and these are chicken wings. Okay, buddy, time to take a bath. Now you want the chicken to just be covered. Might just take a little swim in there. So now you have to add in two onions. So you have to remove the ends, but keep the skin on because it adds some interesting color. Plop them into the pot, just like so. Okay, there you go, chicken. You got some friends in there. So now we're adding in the celery root. And what we mean by that is this part of the celery, right up to about where the elastic band is right here. It's kind of the butt of the celery. Now you want to rinse that, plunk it in the pot along with our chicken and our onions. 
So now what you want to do is plunk it in there, but wedge it on the side, so it's just standing there. So now we're going to add some salt in. How you do that is pour some salt into your hand, and then you just sprinkle it around. Salt is very important, very, very important in the chicken soup world. So now our matzo ball water is finished. We can put in our matzo balls. You wanna do it carefully, and in the meanwhile, take your chicken soup, set it aside on a burner, and put it to a boil. So what you wanna do is just gently plunk them in there, far away from each other so they don't touch, and make sure not to stir them, because at this point in the process, they're, they're sensitive souls, you know what I'm talking about? Oop, look at this, look at these two guys. They're beginning to float. That's fantastic. That means they're doing exactly what you want them to. I like Passover as a holiday because you get to try all these new, exciting, and interesting foods. I mean, you get chicken matzo ball soup. I never get that on any other day of the year. And it's also a holiday that celebrates freedom, and that's important. These matzo balls need to be free. Free, I say. So, when your matzo water starts boiling again, take it to a simmer, cover it, and then let it sit on the simmer for about 40 minutes. So, while we're waiting for our chicken soup to boil, one thing that you can do is put in a few kernels of allspice. And you don't eat these, they're bitter, but they do add a lot of real good flavor. And I mean, I also like what you do when, you, when they go down and they come back up. Look at this. So now we're adding in some whole bay leaves. You don't eat these either, but they add a lot of good bay flavor. Mmm, it smells so good. <laughs> Viewers, we just have to take this down to a simmer because, I mean, look at this. This is amazing. I've never seen anything like this. So you're going to peel four to five carrots and then wash them, but don't put them in the soup yet. It's not time. I've just been scolded for peeling half the carrot off the carrot. Hello? Mr. Daniel here. So now I'm going to tell you guys a real-life story um, about, so my grandma Nina in the war, she, um, there was very little food and they were gonna have some old rotten potatoes for dinner. And she was getting looked after by her grandma. They were gonna have those potatoes. So her grandma was out of the house, so she thought she, she could help by peeling the potatoes. And she did what I just did, which is really just peel the potato off of the potato. Yeah, like this carrot. Don't do this. So as a result, they got pretty hungry. So I'm really lucky to have this chicken soup here. Whew, look at this soup, it's boiling. So now we're gonna put the heat down and add in our carrots and dill. Lower in the carrots and then put in the dill in a very neat pouch we're gonna show you. So the dill gives a lot of flavor, so do not skimp on the dill. What we did is we got a large bunch of dill, we folded it, and we went like this with a piece of string, tied it in a knot, and we'll just put it in there. Don't actually, um, so we want the dill to stay together because you don't actually want to like, um, have it all go in there. It's to give flavor off to the soup. Just like that, see? So what you have to do is cover it, bring it to a boil, and after it's at a boil, cook it for another 45 minutes. So after you're finished with your 45 minutes, your chicken soup is finished. And then we're gonna show you guys how to put it all together with our matzo bowl. Our soup and our matzo balls are finished. They look great. And now what we have to do is into this dish, we scoop out the onions. Because of course, they were just to add flavor. Now we have to scoop them out. Not only do you have to do the onions, you also have to do the dill. Which is somewhere here. 
There it is. There we are. Just got splattered by some hot bouillon, but just FYI, you also want to take out the celery. Next, what we have to do is take out the chicken so we can dismember it on a plate. And I mean, I'm going to ask my mom to help do this because the chickens really fall apart -y and it's really hot. So kids, make sure to um, get your parents' help if you're making this. So what you have to do is cut the chicken down the middle. It'll break into two different breasts to put it on this plate. So here we have our discarded bits that we're gonna throw out. We have here some perfect chicken here, a bowl of carrots and celery. So traditionally what you do is you take the bouillon and you build your own. So you get the pieces of chicken you want. You're a celery fan, you get it. You're no celery guy, you don't get it. And you can get some carrots. It's a great way of doing it, I think. So now, Tweets! And now before I start eating, I have to do a quick shout out to our friend Charlie Pactor. It was his idea to make matzo ball, um, chicken soup with matzo balls for this Passover's recipe. He's the guy who painted this phenomenal picture behind me. So huge thank you to him for the idea and happy Passover. Now, to actually eat. So, of course, break off a little piece of monster. Some chicken. A little bit of bouillon and mm. one word. Fantastic. One word and it describes this soup in one go. Those fluffy matzo balls, the saltiness of the soup. Bouillon that goes perfectly, that amazing chicken, all those toppings, the allspice, the bay leaves, the dill, all that flavor, it's all in here, it's just superb and fantastic. Also, quick thing, um, chicken soup is actually proven to have medicinal properties. No one knows why, but it just does, so this is another reason why chicken soup is great. So it really helps the immune system. So if you have a cold or a cough, just get a bowl of chicken soup and you'll be fine. This is Chef Daniel signing off. And remember, if I can do it, you can do it. Happy Passover, everyone.